coming to the final fence now in the King George. He's going to maintain that record all right. In the atmosphere, you could feel it. The importance of the King George, he can't be overstressed, really. We would like to the King George was the race for me. Martin back to King Jake holding up. It is one of the races of the year. On the run home, Adrian Oblak. We're writing it was massive, but to win it is unbelievable. And Silvio Conti has taken the lead over the final fence. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be alongside different jockeys from different generations spanning five decades of one of the great racing events and one of the great Christmas traditions. It's the King George VI chase here at Kempton Park. Richard Pittman, Robert Earnshaw, Adrian Maguire, Jim Cullity and Noel Feely have all won it. Thank you all for coming. When I say the, the phrase, the King George VI chase, what emotions does that stir for you? Very exciting because it is a huge, huge race, but also being a bank holiday, all the Londoners come out, you know, and the atmosphere, you, could, you can feel it. It's a unique track, isn't it? If you ran the King George around Newbury, Sandown, mm, this wouldn't work, would it? Weatherby, yeah. it just wouldn't be the same race. It's got gravitas, that's what it's got. It is huge. The importance of the King George, he can't be this overstressed really and then it was the Gold Cup. There were only two races that really mattered. When I was young I, I used to remember um, be so excited watching Desert Arcade win it and that's kind of got me hooked on racing. It's one of the big races of the year and um, for every jockey if you said at the start of the year what, where would you like to be on Boxing Day it's, it's here for the King George um, it's, it's a massive race and like even to have a ride it was massive but to win it is yeah. Unbelievable. When I was riding in it, you get the Christmas dinner out of the way. And, um, <laughs> you, you're then thinking about you know, the race. That's one of the things that we have heard traditionally over the years about how the jockeys are in that dilemma of how they deal with Christmas time and obviously riding in such a big, a big day uh, 24 hours after one of the, the great celebrations of the year. Did it, did it affect you guys much? I didn't struggle that much with my weight, um, so I wasn't too bad. I was the same as Jim. I, I had no problem with my weight, so I could have my dinner and uh, look forward to a good day's racing with a couple of good rides and chance of riding a winner or two. Well, I'm expecting a slightly different answer from Robert because he's the tallest, I think, amongst you. So he's, like, <laughs> he's like a bean poultry. <laughs> when the, the step up to riding the really good horses came, it meant that I wasn't a one of the northern tracks on Boxing Day, so I could have Christmas dinner, and that was a great relief. <laughs> Albeit not much Christmas dinner. Why don't we drill down into each of your King George successes in the year that ends in three? And we go back to 1973, Richard. So talk us through the 73 race. He told us when he was ready to win, the telltale sign was when he was right, and we finished a gallop, he would come home like a soldier. He put his head down and his feet would come above his head as he walked home. And then you knew Fred Winter would say, we'll run him. What was he like in the race itself? Oh, he, he was brilliant. He was the most superb uh, jumper. I have a photograph here Ed Byrne took, and Ed was a bus conductor at the time and taking snaps and he got Pendle standing off outside the wings here. He sold half a million copies of it, you know, and there he was a bus driver well, or well, conductor. Got rid of that job, you know, and became... <laughs> and all the way through watching back at that race in 73, it just looked as if you were waiting for the right moment to, to let him go. Uh, but, but Richie, all the boys will know you can't go without your horse and to be able to ride a horse that's running away all the time through a race, you know, it's just fantastic. He was a very, very good horse. And another great horse, Robert, in Wayward Lad. Can't who, follow that. Well, <laughs> I mean, in fairness, he's, it's, a, it's a good start, isn't it? Not only did he win the King George three times, but he, he ran some mighty races in defeat as well, didn't he? He did, but he was a very uncomplicated horse. You could put him anywhere, really. He didn't pull, you could pick him up whenever you wanted. He could put a race to bed in within strides. Wayward Lad's going to win it by some three to four legs. Wayward Lad's going to win it at the line. Wayward Lad is the winner from... So I always tried to use that electric turn of speed that he had. From declaration day, I was going to win. Um, I was fairly confident and, and throughout the race, I was quite confident. I don't remember him as not traveling. I think he was just settled and 
going as, as well as I wanted. You were very stylish over a fence, weren't you? Aren't you pleased with yourself because you're a big guy, but you, you were all, your back was always level like that. It was good. Not so much in the rest of it, though. <laughs> no. Being associated with Wayward Lad and Bragan and Silver Book, that, that tells you he was doing something right. Yeah. Adrian, one thing your horse did when you won the King George Barton Bank was that he was a trier. And my goodness, did he try in that race? I thought he was beaten. I tacked him up one day back in the yard and I asked afterwards, he had no wither. He had two shoulders, two shoulder blades, and he had no wither. His wither was flat. He didn't, he didn't find uh, jumping easy. He didn't, uh, didn't bend his back. You had to make your mind up six, seven strides away from the fence, what you were doing. If you were going forward or taking his head up into the air to get him to come back, because he, he wouldn't come back. He'd just keep charging at the fence. We got away with it. He stayed straight and I stayed on him. And um, yeah, held on to him round the bend into the straight. It was just flat to the boards down to the last. And I could see Declan on the outside. I let my lad drift over to him because I felt like Declan had me and my lad, thank God he jumped as well and he battled to the line. It's Barton, Bank and Brad, we start doing battle. More challenge, not enough. Afterwards, looking back on the race, not knowing, when I drifted over to, to Declan, it just stopped the run of the fellow. We're going to object to you, that was foul riding. <laughs> I thought it was terrible. Well, no, I, I, I was actually clear. I was clear. <laughs> a lot of my friends around the same area, era, tried to model themselves on Adrian Maguire. It was an impossibility because he just had such a unique style. Like, you couldn't copy him. And horses ran for you and jumped for you. Like, just unbelievable. Horses that wouldn't travel for other people, wouldn't enjoy their racing. Adrian just stand on top of them. They'd travel sweet or two ears prick. Jump, jump, jump. Let's talk about Edredon Blur's win, if we can, uh, Jim. They were probably talking about retiring him really and they said we'll bring him back and give him one more go if he has, if he has a bit of sparkle. So he won five in a row. He was 11. Yeah, he was getting along the yeah. tooth, yeah. Yeah. He came here, so the next thing is tactics. So off I went, made the running, kind of wanting to go fast enough to keep his head in front but go as slow as I could doing that. Um, either way, jumped the last down the back and I was starting to run out of petrol. and So I actually pulled out, let them up my inner, um, let him fill his lungs, and once I turned into the straight, then right here we go, all or nothing, absolutely flat out. Got back in front of Thierry Dumen. He was on the inner. I was outside him. I got about a head in front of him, approaching the third last, and I just quit coming in, coming in, coming in. I promise you, I still giggle about it now. Thierry, absolutely, I frightened. This has never happened. They don't race so close in France. And uh, I just completely intimidated him and his horse. He was squealing like a baby. <laughs> he started screaming like a baby, going down to the third last. And as a result, Thierry just two strides away, just did that on the horse. <laughs> He was a star. T to come back then and do that when, every, when he was kind of a forgotten horse, you know what I mean? He was kind of past it. I think it's amazing Edredon Blore won a King George because you do need to stay in a King George. They go fast the first circuit, they go faster the second circuit, and you have to stay. It's, it's, I know it's a flat track and it's, you're turning, but you still have to stay in the King, in the King George. So I think what Edredon Blore had done at 11 years of age was some feat. No, you rode Rinalco Conti very early on in his career over hurdles, yes. but then there was a long gap. That pesky chap from Ireland, Ruby Walsh, kept you at bay for three years before you were able to get back on him. But I kind of had set my stall out that I was going to make a lot more use of him this time, and um, Q Card went off a fair old lick, as he always did. Um, and I just, I just tried to hang on to his coattail as long as I could. And it is Cucard who's simply trying to gallop them into the ground. My lad kind of nodded at the back of the third last. I thought, oh, he's gone. But actually, when I picked him up, he actually grabbed the bit and started to go again. I thought, I got a chance here. And Cucard tied up, I suppose. My lad got going, winged the second last, and won well in the end. Yeah. And Silvio Conti has taken the lead. Noel Feely then is the classic of how one should ride. Good length of leg, has him squeezed into the bit, never 
did anything that he shouldn't do, never fired one, never broke one's jaw, just sat quiet and another exceptional talent. No, I, yeah, I, I got by, I got by. But y you never used to go mad yahoo standoff outside the wings, did you? You were always... Fair enough. You were, no, 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 you had a good eye for it, you know. All you boys did. I mean, you, you never went yahoo, because you knew Mrs. Dickinson was watching, that's why. <laughs> I'd like to ask you about obviously, some of the great horses that have won the race, some of the great memories, Richard, and the beauty of having you all here. You span so many different decades. But what would be the horses that you think, if you were to pick out some names, Richard, that uh, would be the example of the perfect King George horse? Well, because I'm so much older than the boys, my memories are still way back, you know, and then we've seen some great horses in, in recent years. You know, there's a statue here of Desert Orchid. But the horses that stick out to me, Arco was made like a greyhound. He wasn't, you know, he, he, he was lean. He was fairly tall, but he was lean and, and jumped well, only made one mistake in his life, Cheltenham the last first time round, Pat Taff never even moved, not a muscle. You know, a lot of people now with toes in the irons would have been gone. He was just such a good horse. Growing up, I heard of Arkle. Heard of him, yeah. And uh, saw a little bit of Pendle. Desert Orchid was a bit special, wasn't he? He was amazing and the kind of horse we'd all love to ride. There's been so many great winners of it and I think visually, I think, was a Tissel crack. Yes. Yeah. Tom Scudamore. Tom Scudamore. Yeah. yeah. Like on Orange the day, colors, yeah. that was an outstanding performance. Well, the standout one for me would be Desert Orchid. The fact he was, well, Richard's moaning that he was, that he was grey, not white, but he, <laughs> he did look white. But he was a standout. He was just, he was a standout horse. He, he would just always live on in my memory. Was it, would oh, it be Desi for you? Desi, yeah. Desert Orchid was definitely big front running, ball jumping. He was de definitely the one um, I would have been watching. And obviously Cato Star later on, uh, fantastic horse. I nearly rode him in one King George, but I got injured beforehand and Mackay rode him, he got beat. It was the only time he got beaten. So probably lucky I didn't ride him. <laughs> um, but yeah, Cato Star was amazing around here as well. You always seem to lean left uh, in the home straight, even when he was winning the first year, he jumps, leans a bit left, Ruby sort of brings him back again. But then he goes round Cheltenham and then they're saying that Cheltenham isn't quite his course, yet he wins two Gold Cups. What's the story there? I'd say he was an unbelievable horse. He won a, he won a Tingle Creek. Uh, he, was just, he was just a very, very good horse, but he was also very well trained by Paul Nichols. To bring him back here, six King Georges, he won five of them. Uh, unbelievable to get him here, get him right every year, bar one. He had all the attributes a horse needs, you know, jump, speed, etc. But just going, reflecting on Paul Nichols, great for the public. He talks to the camera all the time and he talks sense. Paul Nichols, in fact, uh, has won the King George more than anybody else to this point. 13 wins in the race with some of the greats of the game. Is it simply a case of Paul Nichols has got a big team? got good horses, it's inevitable that he's going to win big races. He's got a lot of those French horses and I think the French bred horses seem to hand, handle Campton better like than the English or Irish bred horses. When I was a child, before you were born, um, <laughs> French horses were the thing over here. Major Caslet trained for the Queen Mother. All French horses. And then for 20 years, nobody was buying them for some reason. And now, of course, a horse wins impressively in France. There are three agents waiting there, and you buy it on the spot. There's none of this, oh, I'll think about it totally only. You buy it or you don't, the next fellow buys it. That's actually a good point because one of the reasons Paul Nichols probably has an unbelievable record in this as well is because at that time when he was winning, he had Anthony Bromley, and Anthony Bromley was in France every day buying them. So he was getting those type of horses to win this type of race. How many, how many King George did Cato star with? Five. Five. That helped. And, and Paul has won? Thirteen. I say he likes winning it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for the part that you've all played in establishing the King George as one of uh, Britain's favourite races. Hopefully you can join us here at Kempton, uh, racing of course on the 26th of December, the three big races, the King George, the Corto Star, Novices Chase and the Christmas Hurdle, or perhaps you can come along on the 27th when we'll be honouring the mighty grey Desert Orchid. With the Desert Orchid Chase, perhaps you can be here for both days. Uh, either way, enjoy your Christmas and enjoy the King George. <laughs>